All right. Well, we'll, we'll welcome in Jalen Tate. Uh, Curtis, please get us started. Hey, Jalen, we talked some before this about your past NCAA tournament experience. You know, to, to make it back this year and get a win and then shortly after realize that you're playing Texas Tech of all teams, just can you describe you know, what's going through your mind there and does it kind of feel like it was supposed to be this way all along? Um, in my mind, I don't know if it was supposed to be this way necessarily. You know, I haven't even looked ahead as far as just who was going to be our next matchup until we it became official. You know, that team, we played them a couple of years ago and just on top of my head, they really guard. You know, they're a well-coached team. They play really, really hard. And, you know, those guys are going to be fired up to play us as, as an NCAA tournament game. So just trying to be able to go out there and put our best forward. I mean, with me playing them a couple of years back, you know, it is destiny and it gives me a chance to get a, a you know, a bit of get back. But at the same time, it also allows me to be able to tell our guys a little bit what's coming, you know. So just trying to go through that when we go through the prep today, just, you know, as far as just how we had to take care of the ball. Obviously, they like to get out in transition and they have some really good players over there that, you know, some of which that were there when I when I was even there. I know the Edwards guy was there, the two guard. And, you know, as far as Chris Beard's team, you heard coach talk to uh or speak to it a little bit, you know, his teams play really hard and they I, they take on his identity on the court, you know, a little bit. So they're going to be fired up. They're going to be ready to play. So are we. And that's, you know, just how that goes. Nate Allen. Just as far as you, you feel about the, the rest of the team and getting their feet wet in the NCAA, it looked like the, they were kind of had the jitters at the start. You feel all, all that's behind them now? Uh, yeah, I mean, we only had one guy today, or my fault, the other day going into the tournament that had played before. So that's really natural. And I think a lot of that is a testament to just us respecting our opponent. You know, we didn't want to come out too aggressive with a team like Colgate that, you know, as far as the scout went and what we were told, did a great job of using your aggression against them, against you. So, you know, we had to feel the game out a little bit. And then once we made some adjustments, we were able to, turn those guys over and speed them up a little bit. I think we were able to, you know, turn that corner a little bit, make a run, you know, to end out the first half as well as end out the second half. Also a guy like Justin Smith going 40 minutes and then having to play two days later. Any concerns about that? No concerns at all. I know Justin's a guy that spends excess time, we know, with our trainers and our training staff and just to get his body right. So, you know, he when it comes to things like that. So I definitely believe that Justin will be ready to go come Thank game you. tomorrow. Jason Carroll. Hinkle playing there tomorrow. Does that mean anything to you? Have you seen the movie Hoosiers and just the legendary arena that you're getting ready to play in for a chance at the Sweet 16? So a couple of years ago, a backstory that'll be fun for you guys is just when uh, one of my teams at NKU, actually, my best team, I think. I don't know if we made the tournament that year or not, but my coach definitely took us there. It was like, this is Hinkle Stadium. And we were in the Horizon League. Butler used to run the Horizon League. And we took a look up at all the banners. And he said, I think this is a Sweet 16 team. You guys can get to the second weekend if we play our hearts out, you know, play our hardest. I believe it was the year we, the first year we had an indie the tournament and just looking up at Butler's runs that they had to the Sweet 16 and being able to now play for a Sweet 16 berth in that arena with all those mid-major teams especially but now being on the level we are with Arkansas it does mean a lot I've only seen bits and pieces of the movie Hoosiers but it definitely is special you know I heard a lot of history about that arena and I've actually played there or practiced there you know in in the past due to us playing in Indiana so it's definitely something to look forward to. Troy Lynch. Yeah, Jalen, you know, Mus was kind of joking about how you guys as a team are handling the bubble situation a lot better than Mus. I was wondering what your experience has been like and how you think Coach is handling it. Uh, Coach is, you know, I'm not sure if he's handling it necessarily bad, but, you know, the guys, we're – we're doing everything we can to stay with protocol and do everything that uh, the coaching staff and as far as just the personnel around here is telling us to do, stay socially distant, stay to our rooms and just, you know, 
look at how the NBA handled things and everybody in our group wants to, you know, get to that level one day and should Corona stay around, you're going to have to eventually go through that, you know, in another state of your career, especially for us older guys and even with the younger guys who will be coming back and they have a Corona next year. So as far as that, you want to get used to it and get used to excelling in that, you know what I mean? Following protocols and being as safe as you can to keep yourself and your family and friends safe as we can so we can pray if we can get out of this pandemic and honestly get back to real life because I think that's all we want to do. That's what we all want to do. Bob Holt. Hey, hey Jalen. Um, you know, Arkansas hadn't been to the Sweet 16 since 96. There's been 99 other programs Make it since then, including Coach Musselman taking Nevada in 2018. What I know you guys are doing this for yourselves right now in the here and now, but um, Arkansas fans are hungry for Sweet 16. What, what, what does that mean to you? What would it mean to you guys to get the Sweet 16 for yourselves and for all the fans? And, and is it kind of hard to believe a, a program of Arkansas stature hasn't been there in so long? Um, I'm not sure about, you know, as far as just the last 20 years between 2000 and 2020. With the players that comes out of here, it is a bit surprising, you know, with the Bobby Portises and the uh, Ronnie Brewers and the guys like that, you know, not making it to the Sweet 16. But it's definitely special for our group to be able to do it. You know what I mean? With this group and just the way we gel and how we are together and especially the camaraderie we had built and the goals we set for ourselves early, this is one of them. So just being able to honestly make it to that Sweet 16 will be a blessing, you know, in itself. And, you really just want to take every single game for what it is. And that's, you know, what could be our last game together, you know, our last day, or really be able to call each other all family, you know, this exact group being here. Because next year, you know, guys come back or they go and you bring in recruits and guys take on different roles and stuff like that. So for the time being, just being where your feet are, making it so C16 is our only goal, you know what I mean? Let alone the main goal. And then uh, Eric said you guys didn't really celebrate in the locker room yesterday after you won. It was kind of business as usual. Um, was that something you guys had talked about, or is that just sort of a natural reaction? What did you think about that and why, why you guys were like that? Because these NSA tournament games are hard to win whoever you play. I mean, as far as celebrating the win, as if, you know, we had upset somebody, but, you know, we expected to win. And that everybody really took the pressure off of us, I would say, in picking them but it also put a chip on our shoulder, you know, as far as we feel like we want to beat them. And, you know, after we did, it wasn't like, it was, I'm not going to say they weren't a great team and, you know, everything that all the statistics backing it up and how they were higher than us in the net, it was a bit of an upset, but I don't feel like we should celebrate as if it was one because we expected to do that. It was also a bounce back game. We didn't like the way we played against LSU. And as far as how the game started and how we had to come back and everything, you know, you just want to take care of it as business as usual, you know? I know you guys are getting ready to go outside for an hour. I guess it's recess or whatever. Um, what, what do you like to do when you get out there in the in the air, fresh air? The other day when we went outside, I was on the field a bit. You know, I got to talk to a couple coaches and players that I know, of, like that I'm familiar with as well. And we played a little bit of badminton amongst the team. Uh, we played, we threw the football around a lot and really just got some fresh air. We got to see the big tournament bracket on the uh, Marriott Hotel. You guys are probably going to see the pictures of those later. Well, we just, you know, it's actually good to be able to step out, you know, and just get some fresh air, make it feel like regular life for a little bit. Because, you know, if this whole COVID thing wasn't going on, you'd be able to, you know, grab something to eat with your families or, you know, see your friends that are in town. But for the time being, it's just us and us in our bubble and the people that came into the bubble with us. So being able to just spend that time outside and see what guys have as far as other talents, you know, I realized that Moses and Jalen Williams can really throw a football, you know what I mean? And as far as, you know, some of our GAs and some of our players, you know, we got some pretty good receivers and defenders, you know, it is just like guys finding other ways to have fun, man, besides, you know, your usual things, your unusual suspects, like, some of the GAs and managers and even, you know, some of our coaches' assistants coming out there, you know, seeing that fun side of them. So it's definitely cool seeing guys do other things. Okay, thanks, Jalen. I see Scotty's got a couple more. I'll, I'll turn it back to Mike. Th thanks, Jalen. Good luck tomorrow. Yeah, Scotty, close us out, please, Scotty. Thanks.
Yeah, Jalen, I think five of your six buckets yesterday came when you were in that short mid-range area or at the rim uh, in the lane. Just when, when you get your offense going there, how do you think it impacts the offense as a, as a whole and opens up other areas of your game? And then secondly, your thoughts on just Devo's play, you know, some of the plays he made in the open floor and then the the between the legs pass he had to JD for the three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with Devo's uh, pass was amazing, man. And, you know, Devo is – what I like to call the greatest showman. Honestly, like he never ceases to amaze me in some of the things he does, especially with how hard he plays and how he moves around the court and just the way he can turn the tide of the entire game, man. And just the way his energy affects every single person. Like I think Moses said it the other day, he's like, anytime we're in a game like that, you know, against a team, especially like when we were in non-conference where we get down double digits, it just seems like Devo makes a play defensively that leads to an offensive bucket. And, we're able to spark off that and feed off that energy. So just seeing him do things like that to, you know, open you guys' eyes, but we all feel it. And so for him to get that type of recognition off of a pass like that, he should, first of all, like easily sports center top 10 if it wasn't. I didn't get to watch yesterday. But, you know, when he does things like that, it brings a different type of energy and bravado to our team that gives us the confidence that, like, shoot, we can do anything out here. You know what I mean? So that's for one. And then as far as just – you know, me making shots in that little in-between mid-range area or not so much as rim shot, but close to the basket. Just really taking what the defense gives me, honestly. I feel like I have really good touch around that area and I'm able to shoot over smaller defenders if it is, or, you know, if the big man isn't all the way up yet, it gives me that little in-between to where if he comes up, I can make the passes to Justin like we did a little bit down the stretch and also shoot over him because it's just a shot I've worked on my entire life and we work on every single day when I'm in the gym.